Gene expression. Gene expression is a process of controlling protein production. Genes turn on and off in response to their environments and the resulting needs of the cells. Not every gene needs to be expressed all the time. In fact, some genes are rarely expressed while others are expressed regularly. What controls when they're expressed and how much protein gets made? We'll take a look in this video and the video that follows. There is no universal mechanism that controls protein production in all cells. Depending on the type of cell, however, there are several factors that influence which proteins get made, when they get made, and the rate of production. This can occur at any of the following four levels. It can occur during transcription, after transcription but before the mRNA leaves the nucleus, during translation, and after translation is complete. We'll take a look at all four of these levels of control. Several steps in the gene expression process may be modulated including the transcription, RNA splicing, translation and post-translational modification of a protein. Gene regulation gives the cell control over structure and function. Transcriptional control occurs at the nucleus and it depends on which structural genes are transcribed and that depends on which part of the DNA unravels. How long the DNA remains uncoiled will determine how much mRNA gets made. If it's uncoiled for a longer period of time, more mRNA strands can get created. If it's open for only a short period of time, only a little bit of mRNA will get made. The amount of mRNA that gets produced is related to the amount of protein that gets produced. Post-transcriptional control also occurs at the nucleus. It occurs after transcription has taken place but before the mRNA leaves the nucleus. Here differential processing of preliminary mRNA takes place before it leaves the nucleus. Different sections of the mRNA are removed resulting in different possible proteins. So for example if this was the original DNA strand it has in it portions called introns and exons. If the introns are all removed what we're left with is a section of much shorter mRNA made up only of exons. These are bonded back together. This process is called splicing and we're beginning to learn that Depending on which introns are removed and which exons remain, we can have one segment of mRNA that is processed in several different ways and therefore it can produce different proteins. Another post-transcriptional control mechanism is related to the speed at which the mRNA leaves the nucleus. Nuclear pores can open and close and therefore they can control the rate of exit of the mRNA and if a lot of mRNA is allowed to leave in a short period of time ribosomes can attach to it and create a lot of protein but if only a little bit of that mRNA is allowed to leave the nucleus in a given amount of time much less protein will be produced. Life expectancy is built in by creating a variable length poly A tail. A poly A tail is simply made up of repeating units of adenine bases and it's there because it prevents the work of enzymes that degrade mRNA. It is gradually degraded in the cytoplasm but if it is long enough and the mRNA can reach the ribosome, the designated protein should be translated. The longer the poly A tail, the longer the mRNA will be able to exist and therefore the more protein can get made from it. Thus the poly A tail acts kind of like a wall. Enzymes gradually wear away at it trying to reach the rest of the mRNA. Once the mRNA reaches the ribosome in the cytoplasm, translational control is possible. The life expectancy of the mRNA varies and the longer it exists the more protein is produced. Also the more ribosomes attaching to the same strand of mRNA the faster the protein will be built. In this small image we see a strand of mRNA undergoing translation by several different ribosomes simultaneously. And so you can see that if you look along the length of the mRNA you'll see varying degrees of protein doneness. At this point, protein strand is very little, but these other ribosomes are in later stages of producing the protein or polypeptide chain, and so we have them at different stages of uh, doneness. 
Once translation is complete, we enter the post-translational phase, and during this phase, changes can be made to the polypeptide to make it functional. So various enzymes attach to it and produce folding, even different amino acids can be spliced out, and ultimately that polypeptide chain that was produced at the mRNA becomes an active functional protein. This has been an overview of the various methods that cells use to control protein production. In our next video, we'll take a look at transcriptional control in prokaryotes when we look at the LAC operon.